Hello, everybody. It is time for Overcast. This is episode number 27 of Overcast, your Overwatch podcast. I am Frosty, and today, as always, joined by my friend Chris Matrix. What is going on over there in California? In hot California, I hear. It's cold. It's hot. Screw this. I'm out. Yeah. No. No more. Like, it. it's... <laughs> <clears throat> Let me put it to you this way. I woke up this morning. It was 40 degrees outside. <clears throat> and that's cold. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, y'all East Coasters, I know you're like, oh, that's not cold. I, you don't know what cold is. <laughs> I've spent winters in Chicago, Philadelphia, Oklahoma. Yes, I, Korea, I know what cold is, okay? I'm climatized. Is cold. <laughs> <laughs> I am climatized to Southern California weather. So 40 degrees, yeah, that, that's cold for me. Yeah. All right. And then it gets like almost 90 degrees, like a 50 degree swing in temperature throughout the day. It's just wreaking havoc on my immune system. And I'm just like, oh, blah, blah. that, that no. is just so nuts. That's so no. nuts. I don't, <laughs> I don't like it. And and I'm sorry, I'm a little I'm a little hyper this morning. But uh, that's because I've been chugging Red Bull since we, I woke up. We got our sponsorship now. Early. <laughs> no, no. Today's show is probably sponsored by Jeff Kaplan's beard. <laughs> Jeff Kaplan's beard, may you forever rest in peace. I know, it's so sad, so sad. Maybe, well, maybe we'll see you again in the next video. I've heard it's making a comeback already, so it better. We, we shall see. Dude, Jeff Kaplan is a sexy, sexy man when he's got his, <laughs> uh, when he's got his manscroft going on. There you go, he's got all the ladies coming mm. after him, right? Well, I know, right? Thank you for joining us, though, for the 27th episode of Overcast. We have a ton to talk about this week. Remember to follow us on Twitter, at Overcast Show. You can also go to our blog page, which is theovercastshow.blogspot.com, where they have all our show notes and links to anything else we talk about in the show. Go to frozenfoxradio.com, our parent studio. You can learn about this and all the other shows the network has to offer. Get stuff on Facebook. And thank you for listening on the audio version on either iTunes or Podbean. And, you know, we talked about SoundCloud a few days ago. Yes. And uh, did you see that they're probably going to close? <laughs> What? So nope. uh, we might not be going to SoundCloud if that happens. Man, <laughs> yeah, I was I, gonna put I was gonna put my my upcoming podcast up on SoundCloud, but that that's sad. We that's, got, that's saddening. We'll have to see how it ends up, but I think that they have like millions of dollars in losses or something, so they're gonna close. Is what I've heard. I heard yesterday. Copyright strikes. Yeah. <laughs> so gotta love it. I I have to know what have we been up to? I mean, should I even ask what we've been doing? Do you really do I, need, do I need to? Do you need to really ask what we've been <laughs> up to since Tuesday? I know I've been getting my feet wet, testing out all the new changes and all that in the in the new iteration of the Overwatch beta. But we'll, we'll get to that later. What have you been up to, Frosty? Oh man, what I have been up to is I have been just going to school and doing the doing the beta thing. Honestly, that's that's the main part of my life right now, is mm -hmm. uh, doing that, and yeah, just trying to trying to get through my schedule, trying to manage all these podcasts lately. <laughs> We've had a lot of content come up lately, a lot of interviews and things, so it's been really exciting on the podcasting front. Um, oh, that's very good for so uh, Morgan's Howl or Morgan's Howl. All of Frozen Fox Radio is just blowing up right now, so it's exciting. Hey, <laughs> just raise the roof, right? Yep. <laughs> so, guys, um, quick rundown. Today's topics, uh, we'll be going over, of course, the return of the beta. We'll be going over our, um, the new progression system, uh, play versus AI, which is awesome. The new game mode, control, uh, the two new maps that come along with it, as well as all of our hero changes. So, Frosty, you want to lead us off here with uh, the progression system? Oh, goodness, the progression system. So, this is the long-awaited... What do we want to call it? Just the the, the reason the to gift. come back and keep playing. Yeah, the thing that's going to keep us actually playing Overwatch, right? Mm -hmm. So now we get to see it. The progression system that we have is well, we have levels. We have player level. It's not character level, not hero level, anything like that. It is player level, and you basically just level up by playing. You just go for it. And there's unlimited levels, though I've seen some things that say that the experience caps at tw level 23 stays the same, Ooh. which is pretty interesting. 
Yes. So, well, well, to be honest, that's probably a smart thing to do. And that's simply because, well, once, like, if you're getting up into, like, the, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and the XP keeps getting greater, yeah. your your rewards are going to be a lot less and less and less, and it's going to be an incentive for you to really not want to play. Because yeah. for those of you who don't know, in this new progression system, uh, whenever you level up, you don't, you don't gain like hero abilities, you don't gain talents like you do in heroes or anything like that. What you receive is a loot box, yep. which has uh, random items in it, and it can be of any varying quality from gray or common all the way up to orange or legendary. And then uh, that, that, that's basically your reward for getting your level up. Um, and also yeah. in those loot boxes you can receive currency so you can buy any of the piece of uh, loot you want um, they had haven't they don't have an actual way of you to actually buy currency or to buy loot boxes or anything like that yet yet bear in mind <laughs> this is a very very early iteration of their progression system which I'm actually I, I'm really happy with it uh, I would like to give all my money to Blizzard so I could buy all the loot boxes, <laughs> but we can't do that yet. There is a shop button, but it is grayed out, it's, so Blizzard, why you gotta tease it. me? Trying Blizzard. to click on it? Come on. Yeah, uh, Blizzard, why you gotta tease me? I just, I just wanna give you all my money and get all my sweet loots. Um, the yeah. kind of loots you can actually get uh, completely vary. Uh, you can get various sprays for heroes. Uh, you can get generic sprays that go across all heroes. Uh, you can get voice lines. Um, highlight intros, so when you get like play of the game, you do a cool little like intro into it. Like I know one I've got is a uh, Reaper shadow stepping into the ground and then popping up right in front of the camera, looking all like awesome and stuff. Uh, there's some pretty awesome ones of that. I mm -hmm. mean, one of the, there's some funny ones. There's some amazing looking ones. Like Mercy has an epic one of her like I, flying around. You know what? I feel bad for Mercy. <laughs> you will never see her highlight intro. I know, right? We'll never, ever see it. I, yeah, um, it's just never gonna happen. The uh, there was one from Zenyatta where all, where like you know when he does, oh, uh, transcendence or whatever, mm -hmm. and all of his arms come out. And there's one where they're all clapping, and then one on the side they fist bump each other. Yeah, oh, I love that one. <laughs> um, and one thing that I've kind of found interesting is emotes. Now, emotes used to be something that was just inherently on your character. Yep. You don't get emotes anymore. You have to unlock them through the shop. Um, I thought that was really I, interesting. I, I thought that was really annoying. Yeah. It's like, it feels like, <laughs> it feels like destiny to me. Like, and... Yeah. You don't want to talk about and that, huh? <laughs> we're not talking about destiny. All right. I'm just saying, same company Bungie, now. Bungie, why I just want to love you. Bungie. <laughs> Please. I just want to love you, but uh, I, th I think but, part of it is to fill out the loot boxes, though, because if, <clears throat> if they didn't have something else as filler, fill you... out the loot boxes, dude. You know how many sprays and voice lines, <laughs> and like there's so much. I get so many sprays. Oh my god, yeah, so, so many sprays. The the interesting thing about the loot box to me, so you get four <laughs> things every time you open loot box. Yes, uh, whatever it might be. Sometimes it can be like three skins if you're lucky. You know, whatever it might be, but the the thing is, as you, since there's infinite levels, I think the, they had to they they needed to look at when they go for release, because people are going to be playing this long term, and I don't know if they're going to add enough stuff to uh, make it worthwhile after a while. Like eventually, you're going to run out of things to get in your loot box. Well, right? you have to remember too, we're going to have free content updates. Yeah. In, in typical Blizzard fashion, expansions. All that. So they, they already have this well thought out. I can guarantee that. I, I just but, wonder if, like, in release, the, they might scale it back to, like, three things. Who knows? Just to slow you down about how much stuff you get. Does that make Yeah. Sense? Yeah. Maybe something like that is what I could see them doing. I want my legendary Reinhardt skin. That's all I want. <laughs> and my, my El Blanco uh, Reaper skin. There you go. That one, that one is pretty yes. sick. <clears throat> that, that one's one pretty is pretty sick. Totally cool. But, um,. Well, with, the, with, with everything, though, you know, it's, it's kind of a pain in the neck. I mean, and this is, this is not just because of, like, what's new into the game, but just Overwatch as a whole. 
I, I think the one big downfall we're going to see is how how difficult it is to play solo. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, those of you who follow me on Twitter, you, you guys you guys know I went on a little rant about this a couple of days ago, but this game is very very teamwork focused. And when you get a bunch of people who you don't know and don't want to talk on voice comms playing together, and they are all used to Call of Duty or like <laughs> things like that, who like, oh, I can, I'm gonna carry this game. Like they, they don't worry about team compositions. Yep. They don't, they don't worry about playing the objectives. They just want to slay out. And yep. that's a, that's the most infuriating freaking thing in the world. Yeah. I, it, it, mm. So have, when you solo play, because I solo play a lot too, mm -hmm. do you ever find people that are willing to coordinate after a while? Like sometimes I'll run into a game, you know, because I always I'm in voice chat all the time when I'm playing solo, and I'm like, "Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on?" Trying to say hi. Every once in a while, I'll find you know like one or two people that are willing to at least uh, coordinate our attacks instead of just run off like normal, you know, go off on their you, own thing. You know, and this is not to be sexist. This is not to you know, kind of out anybody, but I actually find that female players are more talkative in chat <laughs> and are actually willing to work as a team. So whenever I run into a female player, I'm like, oh, thank God, somebody <laughs> is actually going to work with me and play like a team. <laughs> so guys, take notes. Take notes. <laughs> take notes. The ladies are beating your butts. Yep, that's hey, that is that, true. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> so I, I'm happy when I see a female player in the game, and they're they're actually talking, they're communicating. So, guys, take notes. Get on it. Team so, play. This is how you beat Overwatch, or rather, how you beat the opposing team in Overwatch. There you go. With the uh, now that we talked about a little solo play, what about with team play? Because I know you play, you get a lot of extensive time playing with pretty full teams, right? <laughs> Uh, you know, not this, not this week. Not yet. But throughout, throughout all my experience in the beta, yeah, I do generally play with a with a full team. Um, with the with the hero changes, which we'll get to here shortly. Um, I don't know. It, it team play is rewarded a lot more highly, and that's because of the way some of the defensive champions have been reworked. Yep. And uh, like Bastion. It, Almost impossible to kill him solo now, unless you get the jump on him. Torbjorn, same dang thing. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely be looking into that. Um, but definitely. also with the uh, with this new iteration of beta, uh, play vs AI has been introduced, which is really yep. cool for people who either don't quite like don't quite want to go into a full on you know six v six. They might be nervous, or they want to they want to try out a hero and be you know, at least a little bit proficient before they jump into them with, uh, you know, with full quick play. And then um, there's just a myriad of things that have changed with custom matches, so which custom I matches, haven't even got to see yet. Oh, my goodness. The, the custom match options, that's what I love. And if you watch Kaplan's, like, message and everything, he talked about how Blizzard's going to be look, looking to see what custom matches are really popular, what settings are used and things like that. Because... Mm -hmm. This is a chance for us to really sandbox the game, and you can get in there because you can change, you know, your ultimate regeneration. You can scale health regen and limit heroes and things like that. Hero selection limit. Yeah. So. Thank goodness. This this is really a chance to get in there and to just tweak things out. And I haven't been able to play with it more than just with some AI, which you can't simulate, you know, what people really are doing with that. Right. But. I think that this could be a thing that leads to some great tuning in the game. You know, not not only just the fact that we get to experiment and play maybe with some interesting game modes, mm -hmm. but if if people find maybe some sweet spots that they like, you know, of maybe how much health regen people have or things like that, that might actually lead to some really good changes for the actual game when it comes out. Right, and as far as the competitive scene is concerned too, it's gonna it's gonna change a lot. Uh, different tournament organizations are going to be experimenting with different types and styles. Yep. Um, I know that there is a ESL tournament. I think it's either later today or it's tomorrow. Not a hundred percent positive, but I'm definitely going to be watching that and seeing where they decide to go with that. Yeah, for um, sure. 
So I, I, we've, we've talked about the progression system, you know, what's new with that. Uh, let's talk about the new game mode, uh, Control. <laughs> so the Control game mode is a fairly, fairly simple concept. Yeah. Um, it's, on, it's only on the new maps, Lijiang Tower in Nepal. And uh, basically what happens is there is one point in the center of the map. The two teams are vying for control of it. Once you've captured the point, your, I guess you could say your ticker or your bar starts climbing from 0% to 100%. Yep. Once you reach 100%, you win the round, everything resets, you go to round two, you go to a different part of the map, and there's a new control point, and you go and you fight to take control over that. First team to get two points wins, so essentially it's a best of three. Yep. If you uh, tie, you get a third point that you're going to capture. So mm -hmm. it's it's really. I've had some close games. I lost two game two rounds in a row at 99 percent the other day. I can't tell you how many times <laughs> I have played control and the enemy team is capturing it. They get up to 96 percent. We just do one massive push and we control it the entire time and win the round. Um, I, I really the... like, because I feel like this is where people that are willing to coordinate and hero switch, this is one of those game modes where I think it makes the most difference. Because you're not worried about no. just capping something. You don't think so? No. I, I've seen it swing the game a lot more. No, uh, people are still jackasses. <laughs> no, nope, they, they are. People are, people are still going to be the way they I hate playing solo. I, I just, I dread it. But... Unfortunately, most of my play has been solo. <laughs> Chris Matrix 1928. Add me. <laughs> play with him. <laughs> yep. Add me. Believe me, I would much rather play on a team than playing this crappy solo game where team play is encouraged. So, that but, being said... But I, um, when people do coordinate, though, when, when you need to get in that point, it has been great. The only thing I've hated is that May, man. When there's on some of those capture points those ice walls are can be ridiculous yeah but they can be broken down yeah but when you it's, get put in like a torbjorn death trap to counter that's yeah nah. yeah i don't know it, I, uh, it, it wrecked you just us. have to figure a way around it it's really not that big of a deal uh well but, yeah that I, it's just more experience i think yeah but it was crazy three maze just wasting us the other day <laughs> oh, three of them? Oh, screw yeah, that. It was no, three. Just it wasn't just one. It was no, like that's just that's just stupid. And and they laid this is they laid like one lane. They and then they put like an offset one. So it was like a maze just to get to the capture point. And then they just sat in the lanes and wasted us. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Valid strategy, I guess you could say. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. I I have to give them props for that. But so there's the game mode. What about the two new maps, though? I mean, we kind of called it. We kind of. I think everybody kind of figured with the two new maps that they were going to be a, kind of to coincide with this new game mode. So let's let's talk about like Lijiang Tower, and this is a really another beautiful map, and it's set in you know like a nice modern urban setting, city setting, cityscape, mm -hmm. and I have really. I haven't really explored you know the uh, Nepal map yet to contrast this with the, the new ones but the Lijiang Tower I think offers some great points of of I guess attack so Lijiang Tower um I feel is kind of more of a horizontal map in terms of you know when you're playing control the the, the core gameplay on it is a lot more horizontal than Nepal um, okay. On Nepal, you have a, a little more, you have more options when it comes to vertical play. So it opens up a lot more opportunities for attack, for controlling the point. Make, it, it, it does make controlling the point a little more difficult. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I think it's more fun being able to, you know, find points of attack at elevation. Um, yeah. I know, like, people who play a lot of Junkrat uh, absolutely love it because when you are above your enemy, <laughs> it's a lot easier to land your grenades. That's true. <laughs> um, and then Farah, well, Farah just goes where she pleases. doesn't matter what map you're on. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> uh, it makes things easier for people like Hanzo, Genji, just all of that. Um, people who can get around. <laughs> yeah. Like, Nepal is a very, a very vertical-focused map, and Lijiang Tower is very horizontal-focused. Yeah. Which, you know, lays, lays out better for, like, your tank players. 
uh, your <clears throat> non mercy support players. That's um, I was just about to nature. say the same thing. Like <laughs> for players like me, there's there's not a lot of usefulness in flying around because you're usually in the sight line of something anyway. You're gonna get sniped horizontally because you run. There's there's that one area where, as they see, there's like a I don't know like an outer loop. I guess I call it whenever mm -hmm. I'm playing. And if you're running around there, like you're you're in the open and you're gonna get sniped sometimes. That's right. You're gonna die. You're gonna die on the open. I don't know what they did, but man, Widowmaker is broken right now. <laughs> they th there has to be some sort of undocumented change done to Widowmaker because she's one shotting me as Lucio or you know, even sometimes as Winston. I'm just like what wait, what's going on? Stealth here? buff. <laughs> yeah. So it's just stupid. But anyways. But both um, the new maps are beautiful though. Like yes, all the maps, I mean the game gorgeous. are always just fantastic and they just keep coming at us with top notch content with that. Mm -hmm. Art wise especially. Right. So next we are going to go into the hero balance changes. Ooh. Um <laughs> one of the big one of the big ones as a, a support and a tank primary player, all healing effects now work on shields. Yes. Oh! yes. <laughs> About time. It is so nice. Though uh, there was a tooltip so. the other day that didn't that said that the contrary they haven't updated it yet. <laughs> yeah, that, that, what a, that flavor text. Whatever. We'll, <laughs> we'll deal with it. But it still works. Like uh, most of my time has actually been played on Lucio. Lucio and Reinhardt, I believe, are my two most played right now. There you go. And uh, just being able to heal those shields. It makes all the difference. It keeps Zarya's alive a lot longer. It yep. keeps Zenyatta's alive a lot longer. Oh, oh! Thank goodness that that that, that needed to happen. Um, yeah. So there was so a much awesome stuff. and the uh, when you melee now, it'll mm -hmm. pause your weapon recovery. Yeah, about that. About that. <laughs> Stel that's a that's a stealth nerf to like Roadhog or to Genji and Winston like. Thank you. We didn't need that blizzard, but okay. Um, another big one, uh, ammo. Uh, when you're reloading, it now reloads in the middle of a of your animation instead of at the end. Yep. Which is going to be great for people who like to animation cancel. Um, I know I've done this on Soldier 76 quite a few times, where mm -hmm. you know I'm in the middle of reloading, and once I you know get to that part of the animation, I can fire off a helix rocket, or I can drop my healing, and I can get back to fi uh, shooting almost immediately. Yeah, exactly. How about the animation cancels are major? <laughs> How about the muzzle flash being retuned for several weapons? Like, dear God, finally! No more, no more epilepsy. No more seventy-six epilepsy, epileptic seizures, and <laughs> the blue flash of death, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> no more, no more disco, no more disco, disco soldier seventy-sixes. Exactly, and. Just some other things, like they changed how well you can hear uh, distant explosions, and you can also, it's its a little bit more obvious when you're being healed by indirect sources and things like that. So I, I noticed that big time whenever I'm not playing Lucio. I can tell when I'm being healed by Lucio now. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is absolutely amazing. Um, I can tell a lot better when I'm being healed by Zenyatta's, uh, Zenyatta's, uh, Orba <laughs> Harmony. And I can tell a lot better when I'm being hit by Discord. Yeah, they, they've they've made it a lot more visible and more audible too. So it's the it's audible thing is thing. great. I love being able to like tell immediately when that's happening. Um, mm -hmm. What about? I, I, this is one of the big things that happened. The ultimate charge. <clears throat> so now we no longer gain ultimate charge from taking damage, and now we now slowly regenerate it over time for all heroes. It's kind of like a normalization with all that going on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a. I think it was a smart thing to do. Uh, it, it kind of shadow nerfs tanks a little bit, but it really. I mean, when you're playing a tank, you need to be aggressive. You need to be in their face dealing damage, um, and you're still gaining old charge over time. So, like when you're Reinhardt, you know, you're not gonna be sitting there getting heal botted by a mercy, letting people hit you, <laughs> and you gain, you know, your freaking earth shatter. So it, it promotes more aggressive play, which is what I like to see. Yeah, the thing I've noticed with Mercy is that my <laughs> alt is up really fast a lot now. It's I don't know with with a lot of the characters, even like I I played some Bastion and some Junkrat, and it just seems like my alt overall is just coming up faster, which it makes it more exciting. Sometimes mm -hmm. on the other side, it makes it more frustrating because more alts coming at you constantly. Sometimes, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> All right, and then um, what we're we're gonna go over kind of individual heroes now, but um, we're already kind of running a little bit over on our time, so we're going to go ahead and try to do this as informatively, but as expeditedly as possible. Yeah, we'll go more in depth as we go on the next few weeks. Yeah, uh, I know over the next few weeks we'll be looking more in depth at these hero changes, but we're gonna kind of just briefly overview them and give us or uh, give you guys our quick thoughts. So. Uh, Bastion basically completely reworked. Uh, his gameplay is a little bit similar, but he the changes to things have been kind of uh, frustrating. <laughs> we'll put it that way. So um, he now has 50 more armor. So yep. now he's up to 250 HP and 100 armor, making him eh. It, it's it's not that terrible of a of a buff. I mean, he needed yeah. it. I honestly think, it's, especially it's when he's outside of his uh, outside of his sentry mode. They they changed his weapon spread a little bit. Really, the big stuff came with sentry mode, <laughs> and so you know, we got rid of the shield, just nix that. Yep. And, and now he can also turn 360 <clears throat> degrees, which yep. is good and bad. <laughs> it's good if Terrible. you're Bastion. And uh, the different thing is they they changed the weapon spread. It's more narrow now, so you can't just spray a huge area as easily. I mean, 20 percent. But it might not seem like that big of a deal, really. Yeah, but that also means that rounds are going to be landing more efficiently. Yeah, the different, the, the big change in the sentry mode is the survivability he has. So it gets you 300 armor, and then, of course, we got rid of the shield. There's a, his core is exposed, is what they said in the patch notes. So if you get behind him, successful attacks deal triple damage to him. So if you get behind him, like, you know, if you're a tracer or a reaper, anybody can get behind him quickly... You just nuke him pretty quick. Uh, if you're playing in sentry mode, as long as you're fast on the draw, you can usually turn and catch him. But you gotta yeah. be quick. If you don't see uh, him coming, you're gonna get nuked. So yeah, I've I've three shot a bastion before as reaper from getting him from behind. So I'm happy. I'm happy. There you go. Let's go with Diva now. Okay. So I hate you, Blizzard, for ruining my bay. Um, <laughs> for now. Basically, yeah. So when Diva's mech is destroyed. Um, Due to damage taken, not due to her ultimate or anything like that, it's going to despawn immediately instead of uh, instead of staying there for a few seconds, which gives Diva basically no cover, especially if she's in an open type area. And then they nerfed her defense matrix. I hate you, Blizzard. I hate you, Blizzard. I hate you, Blizzard. <laughs> give us back our defense matrix. <laughs> give, us, give us back our reason for playing Diva. But um, <clears throat> I do agree that defense matrix did need to be changed. I think they may have overcompensated on this one. Um, they decreased the size of Defense Matrix by 50%. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Before it was a huge shield to be able to throw up there. Now it's, I don't know, you got to be a little bit more judicious with it. Yeah, and I, I'm not, I'm, I'm personally not happy with it, not happy with it at all, but... You know, hopefully Blizzard will hear all of our feedback. I know a lot of people that I've been playing with have been like, wow, Diva's pretty much freaking useless now. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, so moving on, um, we're going to go to Hanzo. Hanzo's Scatter Arrow now has a fixed spread pattern, making it a lot more predictable for both the user and the one it's being used against. Yep. I still get frustrated as hell when he throws a random Scatter Arrow, doesn't know <laughs> I'm there, and still manages to kill me. Yeah. So, screw you. Um, <laughs> Sonic Arrow can now stick to and move along with enemy targets and barriers. That's an interesting thing. <laughs> that is sick. Um, I like st I like I like sticking it on a on a payload and it actually move with the payload. Yeah. Or um, sticking it to like Reinhardt or one of their tanks and it actually moves with the tanks. It's really cool. Gives it a um, lot more utility. A lot, lot more useful now. And the big thing, Hanzo can now turn while using Dragon Strike. He's no longer. So, for those of you who didn't play Hanzo in the first iteration of the beta, whenever you used his ultimate, you literally were <laughs> stuck looking in the direction you did when you hit Q. Now you can move and kind of readjust while the animation's going off. Huge, huge quality of life change. Yep. I, I, it, got, yes. It makes Hanzo <laughs> a lot more tolerable to play now because the ultimate itself is so much, so much more forgiving now. Um, yeah, it's, it's still easy to dodge. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I've seen Hanzo players like throw an ult out like straight down the middle of the lane. Okay, I moved to the side three steps and you missed. Exactly. You got to know when to use it. Yeah. Well, let's jump onto Mercy. 
Yeah, you know, I'll, let, I'll let you take this one. Your bay got nerfed. My bay got nerfed. So, Guardian Angel. You can now target the souls of dead allies. This is both good and bad, and mostly bad, because sometimes mostly you... Mostly bad? Yeah, sometimes I don't want to target... What are you talking about? Tar targeting the soul of dead allies. Sometimes somebody will die when I'm trying to get to them, and then I jump into a, rat's, or a hornet's nest. And it's not a fun experience. <laughs> well, you're doing it wrong. I know, I know. But, yeah, that's been the thing that I had to get used to. It was like, oh, yeah, I didn't want to target them anymore because now they're dead. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta play smart. Or, or or if you're trying to get out of somewhere and somebody behind you dies, so you jump, like, five feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's been, that's been an awful experience. Uh, but the ultimate charge cost got decreased by 25%, so that makes it so I can res a lot faster. I mean, that's one of the right. big differences. The activation chime was also decreased. The range was cut in less than half. So more than half of the range on Resurrect was taken away. So from mm -hmm. 40 meters down to 15, which means you got to be can't play that far on the back line anymore and still res your whole team. you got to be pretty close yep. to the fight. Uh, that's pretty big because you don't have a lot of health, so you got to. I find myself really dodging and being in shields and trying to stay right next to Reinhardt. It promotes <laughs> more aggressive play. There you go. Hey. <laughs> and uh, it no longer locks you up during activation, which I like that. So that's just like Hanzo's ult. Just like Hanzo's ult. So thank goodness. A lot of quality of life changes. Yes, you know I honestly and. I think you may agree with me on this. Mercy needed those nerves. Yeah, she did. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it makes using her resurrect a lot more <laughs> tactful. I mean, I've gotten plenty of, you know, two, three, four player reses myself. But um, back, in, is, back it, in the first beta iteration, like, you could res your whole team all the from, time. Like, uh, basically from spawn. Yeah. It was like, oh, the team died when I re Okay, Q. Yep. You guys are back up. No, the, it, Mercy definitely needed those changes. Um, I don't know if maybe it might have been a little too extreme. I think maybe give her five more yards, give her twenty, maybe twenty-five. Yeah, but I, um, I don't feel too bad with it because I've still been able to get you know always one, probably two on generally, and I feel pretty useful. I mean, most of the time, if there's like three or four people dead now, I'm not, I haven't been able to get to them anyway. They're too hmm. spread out. So um, I I kind of like the trade-off because I can use it more often, and that that's what I like about it. Because before it was like, even if you were on fire, like the whole match, it didn't really charge that fast, it seemed like. Or it took a while to charge because the cost right. was high enough. So I, I kind of, I'm not too disappointed with the trade off. So. Mm -hmm. And Far, right, so far got a, a, I don't know, would you call it a nerf, I guess? Maybe it was a bug fix almost. <laughs> it, it, was not a, it was not a nerf, it was a bug fix that I guess people can consider a nerf. She can't refuel her jetpack when she's sliding on an unwalkable surface. There was, there was several places on several maps, I'm not going to go into them, where uh, Farrah could basically indefinitely be in the air. Yep. And, yeah, that, that was not okay. So they changed that, thank God. Yep. Um, but other than that, Farrah remains unchanged. She's still a very strong offensive pick. You just got to be a little smart about where you jump up in the air now. Yeah, hey, yeah. you got to play smart. <laughs> uh, Who figured, Reinhardt, right? Yeah. Reinhardt saw a pretty massive nerf to Earth Shatter. Um, the damage itself was decreased by half. Uh, the width of it was decreased by almost half. So, damn. Um, <laughs> it's still a very powerful ultimate. You just have to aim it. Yeah. And it's not going to one-shot Mercies anymore in yeah. Tracers. Um, I, in my opinion, needed. Reinhardt's ultimate was pretty strong in the first iteration. So I'm glad to see it kind of fall more in place here in the second. You just have to be smart with it. Uh, Reinhardt can now turn. He's not animation locked again or uh, view locked again. Thank <laughs> you. Quality life changes. That's right. Um, the big one, um, and this is kind of like a niche fix or a niche change. Like um, Earth Shatter now renders Reinhardt immune to uh, Zarya's ult, Graviton Surge. There you go. And if he's trapped inside of it and he activates the ultimate, he'll be dropped to the ground. And he can get out of it that way. That's that's pretty cool, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean that that's kind of a really niche thing. Um, Roadhog saw really. I'm sorry, but it it he saw like, and they didn't document this, but Roadhog saw a pretty big freaking nerf. 
Um, his chain hook, the stun duration, has been slightly increased. Yeah, well, where you pull him has, like, when you pull somebody with chain hook, they don't get right up on you anymore. Now they're, yeah. they're like, a couple of steps back, which means you have to step up to do your melee. And when you do your melee, your weapon recovery is delayed. Yep. So, F that. Um, so now you have to hook, then shoot, then melee. Um, and now they're further away, so you can't get a full shot off. It's a lot harder to one-shot someone, like one-shot a Tracer or, you know, one-shot a Mercy or a Lucio in. You get a successful hook on them, which is a pain in the neck. I used to love playing Roadhog. Now I'm just frustrated when I play him. Yeah, I don't see a lot of people playing him after, after this nerf because... Oh, I see a lot of people playing him. You still him, see but, a lot of people playing him. But I, I see a lot of people fail with him. Yeah, the, I think that, you know, if we're landing a successful hook, you should get that reward. I mean, mm -hmm. that that's just my bottom line on that, so... Yeah, but anyways, moving on. Um, 76, got a new new reticle for targeting. He also has... His long-range fall-off has been added now, so... That was needed. That was needed, yeah. Because 76 shouldn't be able to battle a Widowmaker at extreme ranges, or... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Know. So th that was that was needed. Um, spread recovery begins instantly now. Yep. Instead or after a short delay, which is nice. It promotes you to use short bursts. I found five round bursts are j typically the best. And then uh, the spread now has a curve, which makes it more accurate at the start, but then it quickly becomes less accurate. So it kind of like ramps. It goes boo. Yep. <laughs> so again, it promotes using the five round burst to line precision shots. There you go. It, it, he, I think these are more quality of life things than uh, anything. Um, the nerf to his long range damage definitely needed, um, and then the spread just promoting promoting more precision play with Soldier Seventy Six. I mean, he was already overpowered to begin with, <laughs> so he needed it. Well, let's let's talk about quickly about the last two Symmetra, and turrets will no longer generate ultimate charge when dealing damage to barriers. Okay, cool. <laughs> Yeah, needed. Ultimate cost reduced by 40% and that's no longer gains ultimate charge while teleporter is active. That's interesting, though. That yeah, you stop getting your ultimate charge. I think that's smart because now you're not going to have a teleporter up 1 million percent of the time. <laughs> and everybody's like, they have a teleporter up. We got to stop it. We got to find it. They're yeah, the teleporter. Now it, well, now it's more rewarding when <laughs> you... Uh, it's a lot more rewarding when you find the teleporter and you destroy it because you just won't instantly have another one back up. Yep. Though her... Uh, her turrets are still ridiculous sometimes. Yeah. Ridiculous. Um, the... <laughs> talking about turrets. <laughs> talking about turrets, Torbjorn saw a myriad of changes. Well, we're not going to get into all the changes with Torbjorn. <laughs> there, there's too many. I'm sorry. We will do that next week. That, um, that could be a whole show in itself, honestly. His patch notes were yeah, longer than like four people's. We're going we're gonna to make <laughs> next week's episode like Turret Saturday or something ooh, like ooh, that. that. That's good. Or it's Sentry Saturday. <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 talk, we'll talk about our turret builders, yes, yes. our turrets and our builders next Saturday. We'll do um, that. We'll do, uh, we'll do the changes to Symmetra, Torbjorn, and Bastion, and then we'll go from there. Uh, just, and awesome. that's simply because Torbjorn's changes are way too many to list right now. So, yeah, sorry guys, I, I can, if you I wanted to hear on. about your favorite midget, I could you, go you're going to have to wait till next week. It'll only give us another week to hate him more. That's what it'll be. I love him. What are you talking about? I hate playing against him. Dude, Widowmaker two shots his turret. Get over <laughs> it. Unless he's popped his ult, which is a different story. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, we'll talk about that next time. Yes. So, thank you for joining us, though, as we wrap up episode number 27 of Overcast. Remember, you can go follow us on Twitter at Overcast Show. TheOvercastShow.blogspot.com is our blog page. Head over to Frozen Fox Radio for information about this and all of our other shows. Thank you for listening on Podbeans, Pod, Pod, Podbeans, Podbean, iTunes, or if you're watching here on the YouTube video, make sure you like it, subscribe, like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter. You can see it right, right here next to us. And that wraps it up. Like I said, we'll get back to the builders next week. We'll talk about, do we like them? Do we not? We'll get some more experience in the beta. Look out for us tweeting out for live streams. I'm sure that's going to be coming a lot during this next week. Already has. So thank you very much for joining us. I am Frosty. I am Chris. I'll see you on the flip side. Stay awesome, Gotham.